Hey guys, it's Elliot. Today I'm going to be talking about the science and the psychology behind gender, the gender spectrum, and transgender individuals. I am a biology major, so I am not a stranger to all the occurrences and the theories and all that that is coming up in the science community each and every day. So everything changes. <laughs> To start off, I want to remind everybody that sex and gender are not the same thing. And there are more than just two sexes, more than just male and female. So there are people who are labeled intersex at birth by doctors, by scientists. And these individuals are typically born with anatomy that might be a little ambiguous or their chromosomes might be like X. X, Y, or X, Y, X, or X, 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 Y, or X, Y, X, X. And these people, as I said, are labeled intersex rather than male or female at birth by doctors. When we talk about life, a lot of people go, oh, it's black and white. That person's skinnier, they're fat. That person is taller, they're short. That is too easy, too hard. But there's more than just two options when it comes to just about everything in life, especially the gender spectrum. So there's more than just boys and girls. And that's why it is a spectrum. Some people might consider themselves both a little bit of boy and both a little bit of girl. Or I might feel I'm not a boy and I'm not a girl. Or maybe you consider yourself to be a gender fluid person or a person who is androgynous. And these all fall under the gender spectrum. As well as gender non-conforming. People who do not identify with the gender that they were assigned to at birth are transgender period. And while a lot of people think you need dysphoria to be trans, it's not true. And this is why. Not all people who are transgender transition. And that is because transgender is an umbrella term that incorporates a whole bunch of people. A lot of people argue it's called being transgender. It says trans, trans is in the name, trans means transition, which isn't true. Trans is a prefix used for all sorts of words like transport or transformer, I don't know. And, and it actually means to go beyond or to go across. So if we were talking about the gender spectrum and girls on one side and boys on the other, if you go beyond your gender, it doesn't mean you go all the way. So if you're assigned a girl at birth, just because you go beyond girl, it doesn't mean you're going all the way here. It could be anywhere on that spectrum. In a Harvard report by Catherine Wu, she discusses scientific studies done on transgender individuals. And these studies are done by doing MRIs of the brain and recognizing whether or not the person who identifies as transgender has a brain that appears to be that of the opposite sex that they were assigned to at birth. What scientists did find was that those who identified as transgender and were female at birth, assigned female at birth, had more male brains and then vice versa if they were assigned male at birth they had more female brains. But then it comes into like how do scientists know this? Where are they coming up with what's a male brain and what's a female brain? And the way scientists are defining this is by a little part of your brain. There are fiber strands that run across the ventricular side of the um, of the surface of the thalamus. And this area is called the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis. Biological males have a denser and a quantitatively higher number of cells in this area, where females have less. So the way doctors depict whether or not you have a male brain or a female brain is based on the density and the quantitative value of those cells. But it's, it's, it's tricky because let's say we were to put this on a scale of 1 to 100 and 1 to 49 meant you have a female brain and 51 to 100 meant you have a male brain. It comes into question, what about those 50 people in the middle? What about those people who are right on the edge of being one or the other? It doesn't leave any room for flexibility or movement for people who might have other things in their body that make them right on the edge. But it also lets individuals who identify as either gender non-conforming or gender fluid, androgynous, and so on, part of the gender spectrum that aren't just necessarily male or female to be valid. So now we're going to talk a little bit about gender dysphoria. 
So dysphoria means discomfort. And that just has to do with your personal well-being, how you feel. And that could just mean like the difference between people who work better in quiet environments and those who work in a louder atmosphere with a more team type of environment. That's how comfortable they are in those places. Nowhere in the word dysphoria does it talk specifically about your body. Gender dysphoria is a completely separate thing. Like it's part of dysphoria, but it's its, its own separate type of dysphoria. All right, I'm pulling out a definition for you guys. Okay, Dr. Renab Parekh, Deputy Medical Director and Director of Diversity in Health Equity says, gender dysphoria involves a conflict between a person's physical or assigned gender and the gender with he or she slash they identify. But there are no genders at birth. Doctors identify you as your sex. That's what's on your birth certificate, sex. On your license, sex. Doctors only label your sex. Gender is a self-identification. No one chooses your gender for you. I have female chromosomes despite my gender being a boy. These chromosomes make up my anatomy, my sexual organs, my brain. If doctors are telling me that my brain is showing a high density, high cell count, showing that I have a male brain, but then they're saying that I'm showing female anatomy, I have a female body because of my sexual organs, then does that mean I'm both? Like my body is both male and female? Or does that mean I'm neither? Like, scientists can't say that my body's one thing or the other if they're saying it's both. That's where we get into the discussion of appearances versus expectations. It's expected for female bodies to have ovaries, to have a vagina, and it's expected for people assigned female at birth to identify as a girl, as their gender to be a girl. As people show, not everyone who has female chromosomes ends up with ovaries and a vagina. And not everyone who is assigned female at birth identifies as a girl. People who live looking only for people who meet the expectations of what people should be are totally closing their mind to all the other people of the world. This includes the 3,850,000 people who are assigned intersex at birth. They're closing their mind to the 1,380,000 adult transgender people in the United States. And these are just the people who identify as transgender outwardly, like on the census or whatever, in the United States. That's a lot of people. So those people who close their mind to all the intersex people in the world and those people in the United States, that's already 5 million people. That's not including any other transgender person in the rest of the world besides the United States. And obviously the United States is in like the highest populated country. So let's say I was a gender fluid person assigned female at birth. I might not meet your expectations of what female should be. It doesn't mean that I hate my body. It doesn't mean that I want to transition. I don't want to take hormones or do any procedures to change my physical appearance. I'd still be considered transgender and I'd still be valid. I still deserve the same respect and kindness as everyone else in the world. So then you're probably thinking to yourself, why do people say you need gender dysphoria to be trans? Well, my friends, People stop educating themselves. They think, oh, I'm a lesbian. I know everything there needs to be about lesbians because I'm a lesbian. I know the lesbian stuff. Or people think, I'm trans. I know all the transgender things because I am myself a trans person. But just because you identify with someone within the LGBT community, it doesn't mean you know about all the people or understand and can fully educate others about the LGBT community. Like, I know absolutely nothing about people who identify as two-spirited, but it doesn't mean I'm going to invalidate them. It's not going to be me saying, like, yo, you're not trans. Like, I actually really want to learn more about two-spirited people, and I'd love to meet someone so they can tell me more about it and so I can, like, not say the wrong thing when, if I ever have to talk about it. Gender dysphoria is not present amongst all transgender people. This is where I'd like to teach you a new word transsexual. A transsexual person by definition identifies emotionally and 
psychologically with someone of the opposite sex and wants to physically transition through hormones or surgery or both. Transsexual people by definition want to alter their bodies. Transsexual people are the type of people who will be having gender dysphoria. But transsexual and transgender are not interchangeable words. When in doubt, talk to a person, ask them their identity, ask them their pronouns, ask them what slur word they are okay with, what they're not okay with. Just make sure that you're being kind and that you're being respectful to the person. If you learned anything from this video, please leave it in the comments. It's so nice for me to see what people are learning, what people don't know, um, and it helps me create new content and come up with ideas for the next video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you can learn more about my personal journey and about other things I might be teaching people about, you know, the beautiful people who make up our planet.